the hard truth about dating today. Hi guys, my name is Christine and I'm a dating, relationship and personal development coach. And today I'm talking about the hard truth about dating today. But before we get into this video, please leave a like on it and please do subscribe if you haven't done so already. And if you have anything that you would like me to talk about in a different video, then please leave it down in the comments. And if you have any tips or advice yourself, then please do leave those in the comments as well so we can all help each other out. Thank you so much. So the first thing that I want to discuss with you is it doesn't matter so much how you are attracted to them and how they make you feel. So obviously attraction is important when it comes to dating. It's very important that the person that you pick to be with is someone that you find physically attractive. That of course is important, but that is not something that you must rely upon alone. Because you see, the thing is, is that a lot of people go into relationships um, not realizing who they are actually with. They are too busy being focused on how this person looks, um, how this person makes them feel, as opposed to whether or not this person is actually right for them. We all go based on how we are attracted because obviously the attraction is the first thing that pulls you in. But it's important when you are dating someone new that you don't get so sucked into how gorgeous they are that you ignore the red flags. And this is something that I did at the beginning of a previous relationship that I was in about seven or eight years ago. All right, I got into a relationship and I was really enamored by the way that they look. And because of that, I completely ignored the red flags. And basically what happened was um, this person cheated on me and I broke up with them a year um, into that relationship. But at the beginning of the relationship, like within the first month, they had asked me the question, oh, what would you do if I cheated on you? Something like that is a red flag. If you get too intensely attached to someone by the way that they look, and you're not focusing on the things that they're doing and the things that they're saying, you're gonna get dragged into a relationship uh, by your own fault, basically, because you didn't pay attention. So that's one of the hard truths about dating today, is that a lot of people are not picky enough. A lot of people don't pay attention to the red flags and then they end up in these toxic relationships. And then sooner or later, you know, there, there's babies, there's marriage, and then you've got yourself into a huge mess. And it's really hard to detangle yourself out of those relationships because basically what you're doing is you're focusing on how attracted you are to them and then um, you kind of go into this kind of autopilot mode where you're not really paying attention to what's going on and then the years, the months and the years go by and suddenly you're really tangled up with someone who just wasn't right for you to begin with. But because of how attracted you were to them and because you are projecting your fantasy onto them, because that's what we do, you know, when we meet someone we're attracted to, we imagine what it's gonna be like to marry them, we're going to be imagining what it's like to have kids with them. We're imagining all the fun holidays, all the great times we're gonna have. And because we get so attached to these fantasies, we start to ignore reality. And then that's when it happens. A few months, a few years down the line, you realize that you've got yourself into a big mess. And then by then it's too painful to actually leave the situation. It feels much more comfortable to just stay with them as opposed to making the right choice and leaving. So don't get hung up on how they look. Don't get, you know, kind of um, sucked in to the, the fantasy of them without actually knowing them first. Because, you know, when you start going on dates with someone, you know, you don't know the, the fur, you don't know this person yet. You don't know someone who they are completely on the first date or the second date or the third day. You know, when you start to really understand who someone is, is when you've spent a lot of time together. Um, this might be uh, within like maybe the, um, the around probably a bit around month three or month four of dating someone and being in a, this like new relationship with them. That's when you start to see who the real person is. And that's usually when you should be making the decision of whether or not you should continue seeing this person. Because one of the hard truths about dating today is that people are picking partners that are not right for them because they are getting hung up 
on their fantasies and projecting all of this interest into someone and basically making up things in their head about who this person is, who they want them to be, but in reality, this is just not who that person is. And that's exactly what I did in that relationship, which luckily I did break free from, right? I just thought, oh, I'm really attracted to them. We're gonna have a great life together. They're gorgeous. Um, I have all these emotions and this intense feeling towards them. It's gonna be great. And therefore I ignored all the things that they were saying, all the toxic things that they were doing because I was so attracted to them. So when you are dating today in this day and age, you need to be smart about it. You need to go into these first dates and second dates and third dates, you know, be very skeptical within those first few months of seeing this person. You need to be figuring out whether or not this person is right for you. And I made a video called um, how to attract the right person. And basically in that video, I go into a workshop on how you can actually start doing this and, and figuring out what it is that you want in another person. So when you do go out on dates, you know what you're looking for. You know what kind of behaviors you are looking for in someone. You know what kind of lifestyles you are looking for. Because that's some, another thing that I made a mistake with. I got into a relationship with someone who loved drinking and partying and coming back in the morning at 3 a.m when I'm more of a person who you know likes to you know do more family kind of oriented things I like to do things during the day like going hiking walking picnics going bowling um, or just having a night in and watching Netflix you know that's my kind of lifestyle I like to do those kinds of things I like to have a more balanced healthy life I don't want to get drunk every other day but this person did and therefore we clashed and it didn't work out so you need to be looking for people who live the same kind of lifestyle as you. You know, there's no point you getting into a relationship with someone who loves exercise and getting up at 5 a.m. if you're someone who likes to stay out all night drinking and getting up at noon. You know, there's no point you being with that person. You two are gonna clash and it's not gonna work out despite how attracted you are to each other. It doesn't matter how attracted you are to someone because you can be attracted to new people. Just because this is the most gorgeous person you've ever seen doesn't mean that you're not going to meet someone who is equally gorgeous and better for you so you need to be figuring these things out you need to be skeptical you need to be really careful with who you are dating I mean you need to be paying attention to their behaviors what they say what they do who is this person that's what you need to be finding out not oh wow they have the best rack I've ever seen or oh my god they've got a six-pack how hot are they that's not what you should be focusing on Okay, obviously it's important to be attracted, but it's also really important, more important, that you have the same kind of lifestyles. So how do you know if you have found the right person? So first of all, you are attractive to each other. Secondly, you want the same things in life. So this could be about marriage, could be about children. Perhaps you are both quite entrepreneur minded and you both want to have your own kind of businesses. You wanna find out if you two are alike if you have common interests, common goals, so you can grow to each other and basically be each other's teammates because that's what you want. You want someone who's going to be there to cheer you on and you equally, equally want to be someone who can cheer on them and help each other grow. That's what you want to find. If you value monogamy, then obviously you want to find someone who is also monogamous. So when you start dating someone, it's good to ask them questions about their previous relationships, was there any cheating involved? Or if, if their parents had, uh, were cheaters, because sometimes we emulate our parents. In fact, we, we do most of the time, we emulate who we grow up with, you know, because that kind of just digs into our subconscious minds as children, because obviously children are like sponges. So we absorb our environment so much and becomes a part of our makeup, basically, as human beings going forward and as adults. So, you know, if you are monogamous, you need to find out if this person is a cheater or if you're polyamorous, then obviously that kind of thing probably won't matter to you as much. But also you need to find someone who is also polyamorous. There's no point in someone being, who doesn't mind being with multiple partners, being with someone who just wants one partner. That's gonna cause a lot of misery. Again, that's a lifestyle clash. You need to be figuring these things out when you go out on dating so you don't make the wrong choices so you don't end up in a messy divorce later on in life and losing all of your money you don't want to be aiming for those things you need to be careful with the people that you start dating and then who you get into relationships with because if you if things start happening like you're having children you have got married you've got a house you have all these things tied together you need to make sure that you're with the right person that you have you want the same things you live the same kind of lifestyles so there's no 
misery. So yes, go for people that you are attracted to, but also stay with those people who want the same things as you, who have the same lifestyle. Attraction just isn't enough. And you have to really think about it. You have to think, well, if I end up with someone who I don't have the same kind of things in common with, who has a different kind of lifestyle to me, who wants different things, like I don't want to have children, for example. So for example, you might be someone who doesn't want to have children, and yet you're with someone who wants to have children. You have to make the decisions now to cut ties, to not go with that person anymore, to not carry on dating that person. Even if that person really does like you, it might be heartbreaking, it might be hard to tell them no, that you don't want to be with them anymore but you have to do it. You have to do it if you don't want that messy future, like divorce, like having to separate and having um, not being able to see your children all the time uh, because you have to have joint custody. You don't want to have that kind of lifestyle. You don't want those things for you. You don't want to lose loads and loads of money on divorce lawyers. You want to find someone who is like-minded to you so you don't have those issues in the future. You need to think about these things. So ask yourself these things when you go on a date. Do we have the same things in common? Now, obviously this doesn't need to be 100%. You could have, you know, you might like action films and they might like rom-coms. Obviously something like that is not as important unless perhaps you're like a big film buff, then perhaps you do want to have someone who likes the same kind of movies as you. But if you don't really care about that much, that, that kind of thing that much, then that obviously doesn't matter. But you need to make sure that you live the same kind of lifestyle. So that means um, what you choose to do on your weekends kind of has to be in a line. You know, whether or not you two both like to exercise or not, those kinds of things. Um, it's probably also good to be with someone who has the same kind of diet as you. But again, that's not as important as wanting the same things in life. You need to also ask yourself, you know, would they be a good parent if perhaps that you want to have children? So ask yourself that question if you want to have children, you know, think about it. You know, will this is this person going to be a good parent? How do they react to children? Do they even want children? You need to also ask yourself, is their company enjoyable? Do I enjoy being around them? Or do they make me feel miserable because perhaps they have like, they're really negative. You know, perhaps they've got some issues that they just can't seem to get over and they keep on complaining all the time. Obviously you don't wanna be with someone who's always complaining. You know, so make, you know, think of that as well. Is this someone who is that I actually like being around or do they suck the energy out of me? You know, do I feel like I'm being drained when I'm with them? And if you feel like you're being drained when you're with them, then obviously this is not someone you want to be with. Why would you want to spend the rest of your life if you're looking for someone to settle down with, with someone who makes you miserable, with someone who zaps the energy out of the room and makes you feel sad? Because they're not going to change. They're probably not going to change because most people don't like to change themselves. It's like the joke, how many psychiatrists does it take to change a light bulb? Uh, just one, but the light bulb has got to want to change. Most people don't want to change. So if this person is miserable, you have to admit that, okay, I might not ever be able to change this person. You must accept that whoever this person is, is probably going to be like how they're always going to be. That's what you must assume. You must assume that they will always be this way. So how do they behave? What do they do? What's it like to be around them? Because mo this is what it's gonna be like to be around them 50 years from now. Can you stand 50 years of this? And another thing to look for is if they make mutual effort. So don't stick around with someone who isn't interested in going out with you, who is flaky, who kind of doesn't really care about you, who doesn't initiate contact, who isn't initiating contact and you have to to put in all the effort. If you're having to put in all the effort, then obviously this is someone who you don't wanna be with. If you end up in a relationship with someone who doesn't put in mutual effort, then that's what you're always gonna be having to do throughout the rest of your life if you decide to stay with this person. You're gonna to have to always be putting in the effort. You're the one that's always gonna be having to do everything. So you need to be asking yourself these kinds of questions when you are starting to get to know someone in a romantic way. If you would like to get in touch with me personally, then please go to www.christineloveridge.com and on that shop page of that website, you'll be able to find a free PDF download that you can go and read for yourself. If you do read it, then please let me know if you have anything you'd like me to add or if you have any critiques so I can make it the best product possible for those people that want it. Thank you so much and I shall talk to you again very soon. Goodbye guys. Thank you.